welcome back. Maybe you're new to um, our podcast, but whether or not you are, maybe you can tell others about it so they can enjoy with us. I Maybe I told you that last week. Yeah, I think I did. A little girl who heard one of my jokes on the podcast. I went to tell her at Mass, and she she really cut my legs out from underneath me. She screamed the answer from the back of church to my the to my question, which was the joke. I yelled at her mother. I said, please make sure you don't bring her back next week. Thank you very much. I'll contrary with you. I'm very happy to see you back. Uh, again, we are celebrating this coming Sunday the Feast of Christ the King. It's the uh, conclusion of the church year. Um, it's a recent feast. It's it isn't a hundred years old yet in the church, and <clears throat> excuse me, it's the cap off of 365 days in one way or another of celebrating the life of Jesus Christ. Of course, next week we start um, the celebration all over again uh, with preparing for the coming of uh, the historical, the infant God made flesh, and then going on with his life through his passion, death, resurrection, and Pentecost. Um, the first reading for this Sunday from our book of Kings is about the anointing of King David, as you might expect. Uh, he has been working side by side, or trying to, with King Saul, but King Saul uh, finally uh, bites the bullet. Actually, he... Uh, <laughs> throws himself on his sword. Uh, and he's given David years of grief, even though David did nothing but good for Saul. So now um, King David is being um, made the leader of the Jewish people. He'll have his problems too, but he'll be known as the, the great one. And the Messiah to come will... Uh, not only follow in the footsteps of King David as far as shepherding his people, taking care of them, uh, leading them away from the enemy, uh, but uh, Jesus, uh, Messiah, uh, once again is going to is going to um, be physically a part of the Davidic royal line. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So. It's only suitable that we uh, reference him this Sunday. The second reading for Sunday is Paul's letter to the Colossians. And um, in that letter, we hear Paul say, Jesus delivered us from the power of darkness and he transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. What a, <laughs> what a tremendous feat. He transferred us from darkness into the kingdom uh, <clears throat> of his beloved son. All things, Paul goes on to say, were created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him are all things held together. Um, that's pretty much Jesus is everything. Uh, I had a T-shirt. I may have referenced it once on the podcast that shows Jesus sitting in at table with all of the Marvel heroes, Marvel comic heroes, and uh, they're looking gruff and you know important. And Jesus is sitting in the middle of them, simply in his white toga, you know, um, or tunic. And uh, Jesus says, "Now he leans on his knee. He says, now." Let me tell you how I saved the world. <laughs> uh, the King of Kings certainly uh, goes beyond all royalty that has ever been in the face of the earth. He supersedes them all. Uh, he is the only king, not only who gave his life, because there were some kings who have done that for their people, but the only king whose selfless 
giving, uh, redeemed his subjects, uh, saved them from a ter uh, terrifying uh, eternal punishment. Uh, no king on earth could do that. Only God in the flesh could do such a thing. So he had justly, justly is called, of course, not only king of uh, earth and the cosmos, but of the entire, all of creation. In him all things are held together. All things. Think of those billions of galaxies. Uh, they're all held together, so to speak, kept in line by Jesus, the King of Kings. Luke's Gospel um, pictures Jesus in a not so stately position, and that is, of course, he's on the cross. He's been crucified. The cross is Jesus' um, throne, and not many kings would ask for such a throne, but his throne really is um, redemptive. The soldiers and the crowds, some of the, the leaders of the Jewish people, cry out to Jesus hanging there as king of kings. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. It goes way back, of course, to the beginning of Jesus' public life when the when Satan told him to do that very thing, if you really are king, throw yourself down. Uh, now they're saying, if you really are king, uh, you know, come on down. <clears throat> and the inscription, of course, uh, pointed out by Luke, uh, of the crime Jesus had committed, it's ironic, of course, because it's true. This is the king of the Jews. Jesus, of course, once again, is not only the Jewish king, taking over um, King David's place of 900 years previously, uh, but he is the king of all creation, all creation. And uh, one day we are going to feast our eyes upon this king, and it's going to be an unspeakable vision, unspeakable vision. It's not going to be quite like... Um, uh, anything that we've seen or known on earth. No palace is so grand, no court is so uh, stately, no fellowship or um, citizens will be so happy um, as we will meet and see in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Start preparing for it. Okay, got to tell you, little story as always. Um, speaking of kings, King Arthur, you know, had his knights. Do you know who uh, who made the round table? Circumference. Well, I knew you'd like that. Uh, I tell you about my friend helping me um, <clears throat> the other day. I cleaned the attic with my friend, and now I can't get the cobwebs out of his hair. And finally, my friend is always seeing flying saucers. He's a very clumsy waiter. Bye.